Let's get started. Hi, everybody. Nessa here. We are here with the second episode of Paper Cuts. Professor, thank you so much for the bits. I will do the bit dance later for you. I'm hoping that you'll stop in my dead by right after uh, we do Paper Cuts. So, which is back. Thank you. I'm trying to look good for you guys. You guys, thank you for work, uh, lurking while you're at work. Anyway, so welcome into the second episode of Paper Cuts for Between the Pages. This week was an interesting writing prompt, I think. Um, I also want to preface this by saying, excuse me, I will not be interacting with that too much while I do um, the recitations uh, out of respect for our authors. Um, so, without further ado, um, our, fir uh, our writing prompt for this week uh, was, tell me about your first love. It doesn't have to be a person. Tell me about when you discovered your own passion for something or someone. What did it feel like? What or who was, is it? And, uh, <laughs> what, how do you feel about it now? So you didn't necessarily have to cover all of those topics um, in your submission, but some people did. I tried to with my own submission. All of these are in order of uh, reception, except for one, and that's only because I went through the, the public page first and then I went through my DMs. So please excuse me, this is not by any other means. Also, my comments and um, suggestions, I'm not a professional. Uh, as always, I'm gonna tell you, I have held one editing job in my entire life. So by no means am I an expert, but I will give you my opinion as a consumer, as a reader, as an amateur librarian. Yes, I just got my librarianship uh, last year, so I'm new, but uh, I do have a little bit of experience and I am ready to work with anybody on their work. Again, I am hoping to open this up to more than just writing. I'm hoping that I will be able to feature other people's work. Please, please, please consider it if you're an artist of any kind. If you want to write a song, if you want to compose a piece, I will figure out how to exhibit it here on uh, Paper Cuts in response to the prompts that I have. So, first up is our submission by Saridwen. Uh, sorry, Dwen, I love you so much. You are a wonderful, beautiful soul. And I... Ugh. Let's, let's get into what she had for our submission. Alright, so, sorry, Dwen. First love. Trapped in a body with twisted limbs, I couldn't learn of the world by rolling, crawling, or walking. These were things denied me. But in that physical separation from the world, my mind was free to grow and dream. On my grandparents' knees, I ran and played with Pan and the Lost Boys, traveled the seas with Captain Nemo, howled at the moon with Mowgli in the pack, and had Ricky Ticky Tavi as my own invisible friend. Even when I finally learned to walk, my friends were still in the pages of books. The feel of the first cracking Fine. The smell of the ink, excitement in the new adventure to come, igniting joy in every fiber. Feeling the love that a tree had sacrificed itself to bring me freedom. Ape from me. Books have always been my first, last, and always love. There might be a million copies, but the one I hold in my hands, it was written for me alone. Through the years, I've traveled many a mile, but always my soul belongs to the stories read. Oh my gosh, guys. That is so powerful, and I I hope I did it justice. But, very... This was... 
genuinely beautiful. This work, oh my gosh. Um, without detailing too much on your own past, you were able to focus the work on the stories and worlds that were such an impact on your life that you were able to experience through your pains and sufferings in the beginning uh, due to your illness and wow. <laughs> Personally, my heart ached for knowing your younger self and watching her wander through books and pages. I was absolutely enraptured by the image you painted of playing on your grandparents' knees. That was an incredible... I can just see it. It, it was perfect. Holy crap. Um... And your final three sentences hit my soul. I, I never thought about a copy being meant for me that way. I want to I wanna reiterate, I want to highlight her final three um, sentences here. Books have always been my first, last, and always love. There might be a million copies, but the one I hold in my hands, it was written for me alone. Through the years, I've traveled many a mile, but always my soul belongs to the stories read and yet unwritten. It's amazing. That was... That was... My only suggestion for this work is uh, to work with it more. Um, as it feels a little raw to me, and with some revision either on your own or with an editor, uh, someone uh, you trust, obviously, that you can work with, to not write it for you. I hate when uh, editors rewrite someone's work, um, but to work with you. So it, I think successful editors are people that bring out and like, oh gosh, what is the word? They, emphasize they emphasize your feelings and your creation and help you find the perfect expression um this work will definitely bring me to tears it, it was super close now um uh, and i can definitely see your love in this mostly because i share such a love i really do and i feel like that's why we're so connected very that was amazing beautiful uh, guys uh, are there any comments? Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds. It was so beautiful. <laughs> Coach, you're gonna write about your love for Kate Beckinsale? I mean, you can. And we're talking about your first love. If Kate Beckinsale is your first love, I got questions for you. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take another hydrate because and not unfortunately, I love it, but I'm 12. Kojo, if you're 12, get out. I love you, but you're not supposed to be a mystery. Actually, this one's fine. This is not um, M rated, so we'll be fine. Here it is, 12. Oh my god. Aaron, what are you doing in here? Holy crap. I was just gushing about you a little bit ago. The right. I joined the, the chat. It said 18 plus. I know um, normally my chats are 18 plus, but uh, between the pages, uh, your ears were running. They should have been because I was just gushing about you. Uh, and talking about how between the pages, paper cuts specifically, I'm opening it up to artists. So um, if you join my server, uh, <laughs> Mass, if you could throw out the... Uh, the Discord, but if you join my Discord server and you uh, basically keep up with the Between the Pages channel, I'm opening up my writing prompts not to just writing, but drawing as well. So like, if you have something that's inspired by one of my writing prompts, like this week's writing prompt was, uh, tell me about your first love. What was your what was it that you discovered your first passion was? Whether it be a person or something else. Um I wanted to know about it. I want I wanted you to tell me about it. But I also would love to see it. 
or for musicians, I'd love to hear it. So um, keep that in mind. I'm going to post about it again um, on Twitter and in Discord, so don't worry if uh, you missed out on this. I don't want to draw cat girls. Then <laughs> don't draw cat girls. You do what you want. Uh, first passion was cat girls. Alright guys, again, while I'm reading through submissions, I will not be interacting with chat. I will be depending very heavily on my wonderful, wonderful mods. So this, this next submission is a little bit long. Um, that's why I took an extra hydration. Actually, I'm going to take another one because it is quite long. But it's wonderful and beautiful and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Our next submission is by Joe the Bearded Nerd, and I uh, hope that you have time in your busy, busy workday to do my recitation. I hope. I will have to preface this by like, it, it pains me every time that I read your first line, Joe, that I don't say, baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> It's like a physical pain, and uh, you'll all see what I mean in a second. So, the mission by Joe the Bearded Nerd. What is love? Webster's Dictionary defines love to be strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. That seems too cold, vague, and void of emotion. That is not love or my experience of love. Love is not an easy thing to explain, but in order for me to explain what it means, I will do so with a story. The story of my first year. In February 1999, Konomi released the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game in Japan, and it was released in March 2002 in the United States, with the first set Legend of Blue Eyes, and the first structure decks Yugi and Kaiba. These structure decks were the first trading cards that I ever owned at eight years old. This became a fad at my school where kids would mostly collect cards and show off the shiniest cards they owned, with the Blue Eyes White Dragon and Dark Magician as the ultimate champions. I had two of each of these and I was the king of the playground. As more cards became available through set releases, we finally learned how to play, albeit as novices. And then the real test began. Who would be the king of games? Just like Yugi from the anime. We began to play every day during lunch and recess. I began to get better cards and began to learn basic strategy, which led to winning small tournaments that we would have that would last through the week. Throughout the next few years, this was the extent of the game that I would experience. I was mostly a collector of cool cards, excellent at the game itself, but I had no idea where else I could play the game outside of these recess games. I had entered into the 7th grade. My middle school allowed us to create an after-school club. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Club was born. This allowed us to have allocated hours to practice and get better at the game. I spent hours playing at school and countless hours at home going over my deck, getting better, building better decks, practicing against myself. This raised my confidence level and allowed me to do better. My collection amassed over 300 cards. I kept winning every match I would play. I was the ultimate duelist at my school. And then the worst happened. My father decided that I, at 13, needed to start focusing more on studies and sports instead of these futile children's games. Heartbroken. I, as a good child, needed and shipped off my whole collection to my I had all forgotten, I had all but forgotten about the games over the years. Till one fateful night at 21 years. I was working overnight security at a La Quinta Inn in Houston, Texas. Hi, bad. 
The front counter clerk, whose name I cannot for the life of me remember, began to talk to me one slow evening. We began telling stories of our exploits and crazy things that had happened at the job, when out of the corner of my eye I saw a trading card binder on the back shelf behind him. Curious as I am, I asked him about it. He told me that it was his Yu-Gi-Oh trade binder. And my eyes lit up. Memories of sitting in the dusty playground rushed into my mind and I asked him if I could take a look. He gladly handed them over to me and I began to see cards I had never heard of. I began to ask him about these strateg uh, strangely colored cards and he divulged everything he knew about the game. After a few nights, we even began to play in our downtime. After he had lent me a deck to learn and play with, he invited me to the local card shop and he, that he played at. And even out of some kindness that I had never experienced before, gave me the deck that I had been practicing free. The next Saturday I went with him to Card Shack in Northwest Houston to play in my first official Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament ever. As I sat down to play, I was ready. I knew how to use my deck to the best of its ability, and I was so ready to repeat my success from my childhood. And I went on to lose. Five rounds in a row. All of them. Never in my life had I ever experienced, of, uh, had this experience of losing at this game that I once was the best player that I knew. However, this wasn't demoralizing. This was a challenge. I was going to be the king of games one day. Over the next few years, I poured time, effort, and money into learning, growing, and getting better at this game. I moved to Florida be to be closer to my family, and that was when I hit my stride. I began to win tournaments at my local card shop. Then I found out that there were bigger tournaments in Orlando, a three-hour drive away, regional this was the next level that I can show my skills. If I did well at these tournaments, I could go play at the national championship. This year was in Pittsburgh. But first I had to go to Orlando. So I brought my new favorite deck, Ritual Beasts, ready to win. And I came close. I went 6-3 out of 9 rounds. I finished 37th place. Only the top 32 players got their invite to the national championship. I was so close. I could taste it. I was going to make it, and I was going to win. I was determined. A few months later, there was another tournament in Orlando, and I knew that I had to do something different if I was to be the best. So I changed my deck to the Cosmo deck. Please correct me how to spell that phonetically. Please. Love you. And made my way to the tournament. The night before, I couldn't sleep. I was too busy practicing plays, going over my strategy. I was going to win. The next day, after two hours of sleep, I was ready. I could feel it inside me. I sat down to my first round, and I lost. I was mortified. This cannot be happening. I thought to myself, not again. And I was almost right. The next seven rounds, I won, forcefully. As I sat down at the last round at the second highest table, I ended up being matched up against Patrick Hoban. This man was the reigning national champion. He was going to be my final test. And I lost. <laughs> it was so close. He went down to the wi we went down to the wire, but I was defeated. However, because of all the hard work I had put in, I had still finished 17th place, well within the top cut of 32 players that gained their invitation to the national championship. I was ecstatic. My hard work and determination had paid off, and there was still the goal of the national championship that I had to go to and win, but I was on my way. A few months later, I made my way to Pittsburgh with my friends, and we were ready. The amount of discipline and practice I had done for Orlando was weak compared to the work I had put in for this one, and I knew I was ready, but here, 
there were over 2,500 players. 2,500 of the best players across the uh, country stood in my way of becoming the king of games. On day one of the tournament, I finished 6-3 again out of nine rounds. I finished 363rd place. I only took the top 256 players, but I felt good. My first national championship and I finished so close to the top. I was in the top 15% of players in the country. I knew that within the next year, I was going to get better. And if not that year, then the next year. In 2017, I made it again to the national championship in Chicago this time, but there didn't, but there I didn't do well. I finished 4-5 the next year in Dallas. I didn't win a single game, 0-4, and I dropped out. In 2019, preparing for the 2020 season, I only went to two regional tournaments and I placed 17th and 18th in these tournaments. I was prepared to make my run back into the spotlight, but then COVID happened. My chance to prove myself was delayed, but not taken away. My invites to the national championship will count again whenever we have the chance to go again. But the relationship that I have with this game, that is love. The give and take, the effort that I've put in, the power that this game has had over me, the drive, the success that I had gained, this was true love. The emotion. The immense and affection that I felt between myself and this game, that is love. Love gives you the power to push through everything, every obstacle, and good, the bad, the ugly, the thing you love may kick you down. But the love that you have is what picks you up, dusts you off, gives you what it takes. Love is simply what gives you the drive to conquer all. Love has nothing to do with what you're expecting to get. Only with what you're expecting to get. Everything. That burns me stories of my Okay guys, so um, I told you it was long and I wasn't lying. It was long. Uh, by far the longest submission, single submission that I've had. But, <laughs> Joe, this was passionate and viciously driven. I could see every moment, even the failures, were just seconds of your determination and ambition to prove your love and devotion to this game. It's truly an incredible piece. I saw your love. This was an incredible journey from your childhood to now, and it included the reality of COVID that we're facing today, this very minute. And its impact on everyone's life and passion is tangible for us all. At least it is for me. <laughs> My only thoughts on this would be to add in or revise some words to include sensory imagery. If you know what I mean, um, I want to see and feel the tournament through your eyes. Tell me what you smelled, what you saw, how you felt. I, I want to know what it is, that feeling inside of you that keeps you going, that picks you up. I know that it's love, but tell me how that feels for you. Give me that sensory. And that is the only thing that I have to say. I mean, we could we could work on the length if you want to work on it. We could definitely work on it. But like I said, I, I could see your love. I could see what it is that you love about this game. And it was truly incredible and I love it. Thank you for sharing your first love with us. Let me get caught up in chat. I'm sure that Mass has been taking care of you guys. <laughs> no, you missed your entire recitation. Holy crap. Uh. Yes, well, thank you for the host. I appreciate you so much. I yes, thank you for giving him 
shout out. <laughs> you came back while I was doing yours. Don't apologize for the length. It was, it's hard to like put into words such strong feelings and emotion. And it's also hard to like taper those words, if you know what I mean. So that's something that you and I can work on if, if you're interested. If not, I, th I still think it was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> still working. Joe, we, I promise you, it just comes with time and experience. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your love with us. I have no idea what it is that she said, Mass. Tracer, thank you for joining us. Mass has been shouldering the extreme burden of modding by himself. So you're going to be awesome. All right. Is there any other feedback? Something about, oh, ha, something hilarious. Yes. But is there any other feedback from viewers that you would like to say? Anything you want to add? Feeling love for a, um, for a trading card game, for for the determination, the strategy, and the huge um, investment that you have to make in it. It's it's incredible. Yes, lady. Very expressive. Very expressive. It was wonderful. I loved it. But yes, we will work on your descriptive uh, writing if you would like. Like I said, it comes with practice. I, I'm not even gonna lie, guys. I used to read a thesaurus. Not gonna lie, I did. I used to read a thesaurus. <laughs> but then if Joe touches the beard, I'm coming. Yes, <laughs> just slap him with a, why are you slapping someone with a fish? Such a strange person, Wolf, and I love you. Ugh. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else that needs to be said, I can move on. A writer's best friend. Exactly. Exactly. Beard stain. Alright. Um, so our next submission is actually by Wolf. Um, it's very powerful. That's all I'm going to preface that with. Uh, get some hydration in. So I don't sound all raspy. All right, <clears throat> let's go with our submission by Wolf Slayer. I also want to preface this by, um, can you do a PSA? Go for the PSA. I, I you go ahead and say that while I'm, I'm gonna do um, a little preface. So this, um, what is? This structure was an incredible challenge and beautifully executed, I want to say. I want to say that. Um, yes, his particular use of structure and form was amazing and I loved it. Okay, I will catch you later, Joe. Have fun. Glad that you're gonna come for Among Us. Uh, those of you that don't know, we're gonna be playing Among Us at 6 p.m. Pacific. That's uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, and 7 Mountain, just so you guys know. Um, hopefully my computer complies this time and doesn't crash on me again. That was distressing. Uh, but yes, well, if you can go ahead and do your PSA, I read it aloud. What's up here? Uh, well, big lesbian, we are doing a recitation of submissions for my writing prompt because I do uh, a literary kind of uh, content on Thursdays. Uh, some Thursdays I do book discussions on the most recent books that I've read. 
But uh, on the other Thursdays, I do recitation of community submitted writing prompts. Yes, this week's writing prompt is telling us about everyone's first love. So feel free to grab a book, settle in. Welcome into our, uh, our little community if you feel like staying. Um, so Wolf's PSA, this is about a darker time in my life. I am only okay about talking about this due to years of therapy and counseling. I was 15 when this happened and started a summer where most of my childhood friends were killed. Wolf, that is, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And um, that really brings a lot of light and color to your submissions. So I'm gonna get into Wolf Slayer's submission. Everybody, please bear that in mind. Um, I did not feel the need to do a trigger warning for this particular piece, but um, Wolf may uh, have other ideas, so it may or may not be a trigger warning for some people. So, uh, submission by Wolf Slayer. I feel the cage open, the door slowly open. The creaking of the hinges, adrenaline through. Who have I become? A man or monster? My heart racing faster, my muscles tense. My body screaming, does it now? My brain screaming, stop, but it doesn't work. I come away, hands bruised and bloody. It's quiet now, a pound of blood. I scream inside, I can't go on, but nobody listens. Crying out for help, but too afraid to let anyone in. Or have I become a man or a monster? Hard, I can't let it out. The cage is rattling, I can't let it out. Blood for blood, the pain is keeps it quiet. Pain is a rush. I feel numb, my body floating. The cage is quiet, it works, I can... I don't know who I am in the mirror. Knowing I'm feared, my outlook looks... The muzzle flashed out, the shot rang out, the blood rushing out, I find my lying on blood runs together they always said blood and blood out my heart is broken it can't go on I need to learn control and I won't I who have I become a man or a monster the cage is quiet now it's sleeping stars are fading Body is healing. Age is locked. Time is done. Rattles now. Goodbye, because battle is over. Finally. Um, is my mic cutting out? I'm sorry. I, uh, there were a lot of pauses, Mass, so it may not be that it was cutting out. Uh, the mic's literally in my face. <laughs> I do apologize. Um, so, uh, Wolf confided in me uh, at the time of his submission that his first love was anger. And um, I was mystified how one could feel love in their anger before uh, I read his work. And now I felt his longing in the pain he described. And I saw the passion that he repressed it was uncontrollable. That's how I felt when I was reading um, this submission. And how much that pained him. <laughs> how extraordinary. Um, I Again, again, this is the second time Wolf has gone and shattered my expectation of this particular exercise. Holy crap, Wolf. Holy crap. You just... 
My mind is blown every single time. Like, I mean, this is only the second time. This is only our second uh, episode of Paper Cuts, but for the second time in a row... Holy crap. I am... I'm literally just, like, blown away. And, yeah, that was amazing. Um, again, for the second week in a row, my only comments on your work uh, for improvement would be to work with an editor for minor grammatical errors. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Lady Brooke, exactly. It was so powerful. It was... <sighs> damn, guys, damn. Why are you guys, you guys are so talented and it's like a hidden talent and I am so glad to be here to exhibit that. You guys are amazing in this community. I love each and every one of you. This is amazing. And I'm so glad that I have um, such willing participants. Um, please guys, I invite you every single time. We do this every other week. We do writing prompts every other week. And um, I always invite you um, <clears throat> to submit, uh, I will, I am glad to work with you, each and every one of you. Um, if you want to submit anonymously, if you don't feel confident, um, if you're just a little bit too shy, submit it to me, uh, in DMs. We can talk about it. Uh, I'm not going to pressure you ever, uh, one way or the other, but... I really, I want you guys to put yourselves out there. I want to share your talents and your interests with with the rest of the community. That's what librarians do. And I don't know if you know this, but I take my job as a librarian very seriously. I want you guys to experience literature. And the definition of literature is not just books. Literature is culture. Anything that is created in an artful expression. <laughs> Buzz, I hope you do not feel pressured. I invite you. I, I want you to feel comfortable enough to come to me. Uh, to, to come to a fellow community member. If you don't even want to submit to me anonymously, but you're comfortable with someone else um, doing it on your behalf, it's fine too. I want to see your art. I want to see your expression. Even if you don't think it's good, I don't care if it's a stick figure. If you feel inspired to draw, paint, write, sing, compose something from a writing prompt, not even a writing prompt, we're not even going to call it writing prompt, something from a prompt, please, please share it with me. Share it with our community. We have a wonderful, beautiful community here. Every single one of you has done nothing but show love and compassion for each other. And I think that's beautiful and wonderful. So, Quaz, I hope you don't really feel pressured. And if you do, I retract any pressures that I might have given you or caused you. Um, but yes, I think that this was wonderful. <laughs> You're not artistic at all, your talent lies elsewhere. I don't care. If you don't feel artistic at all, and you just want to sit here and enjoy other people's art, uh, and their literature, the things that they have to say, and how they feel, sit here with me. <laughs> You're being ridiculous. Um, is, is there any other feedback um, for Wolf Slayer's piece? It was amazing and wonderful and i've already said everything that i needed to say about it wolf you are amazing you have blown my mind again <laughs> oh gosh the most artistic person i know he's the most artistic person i know that's fine tracer you missed Wolf's work? Oh. Plus, I, I invite you to watch the VOD. It was wonderful. Um, if you're not already subscribed, Mask, could you drop the YouTube link? Please subscribe to Paper Cuts and Parchment Minds YouTube. Um, 
all of my book discussions are on there. I will be putting paper cuts on there as well. Um, yes, it definitely will. Thank you, Wolf. Uh, and thank you, Wolf, for your submission. It was wonderful. Uh, okay, we only have a couple more, guys. Um, our next submission is by... Oh, Tracer, thank you for gifting Quaz a sub. I appreciate you. And uh, Quaz, I hope that you enjoy the emotes and the status that uh, subscriptions give you guys. I don't... Other than the emotes and the really cool lightsabers, it doesn't give you a whole lot, but... I appreciate every single follower, I appreciate every single lurk, lurking is loving here, and yeah, the lightsaber, don't forget, yes, the lightsaber is important, very important. Alright guys, um, going on to the next one, this is a submission by Thorsenheim, if you guys don't know, Thorsenheim is my best friend in the entire world, he is my soulmate, in the most platonic sense of the word, don't get that twisted. He is amazing and wonderful. So, without further ado, uh, submission by Thorson. My first love was the sun shining and the wind dancing through the leaves. The sights of leaves falling to the ground. The sounds of rushing water weaving its way through rock, stone, mud, and root. The joy of finding critters among the stones and watching them scurry back into their hideways. It was the sounds of birds in the trees, squirrels chittering among the branches, the feeling of bark and leaf and pine needle, the smell of fresh cut grass, the taste of an apple fresh off the tree and water straight from the hose, the bright blue sky on a summer day, the smell of rain, and the view of white-capped thunderclouds in the distance. The brilliance of lightning racing across the sky, illuminating the night. The dull roar of thunder and of raindrops on a tin roof, and watching the water pool up at the base of the gutter. It was the feeling of corn husks, bean pods, squash stems, and turnip leaves, having watched them bud and grow throughout the spring and summer, the joy of cooking up a hard-won harvest, the smell of fresh-tilled earth, the joy of feeling wild animals, feeding wild animals, watching them cautiously accept gifts of apples and mineral blocks. The simple beauty of afternoon sunlight cascading through the forest. It was the smell of a campfire, watching the ashes float up into the night sky and counting the multitude of stars, the fresh, crisp nighttime breeze, the sounds of coyotes laughing, owls hooting, crickets chirping, the first light glinting through morning dewdrops, the myriad of colors in a sunrise. It was in the sounds of dried leaves crunching under boot and in the depth of fall, the joy of watching them drift slowly to the ground. The vibrant fall colors of oak, maple, and red bud punctuated by the stubborn green of juniper and pine. The purity of snowflake and stunning beauty, beauty of a forest floor blanketed in ice. The serenity that can be found in the quiet places of the world. It was the cyclical beauty of the natural world around us. The breathtaking experience that is life itself, and the unbridled joy of sharing it with a loved one. <sighs> guys, guys. <laughs> Could you not feel that? I want you guys to understand that Thor feels that he is complete novice writer. I can't even put that title to him. I can't because I myself feel like a novice. Um, and he is so good at this. He 
has not written any creative writing pieces for himself outside of academic writing. And for him to produce these things, holy crap, guys, I can't even, I can't, I can't even. So um, I'm gonna get into my feedback. Uh, Thor is unfortunately here, but Bella is here listening for him today. And um, yeah, he's gonna be watching the VOD after this. Um, so my feedback, Thor, I'm truly in awe. <laughs> I saw so much love and beauty. Throughout this entire work, I kept trying to guess what it was that was your love, um, because you never outright stated it in the beginning. First, I thought it was just nature, and then autumn, then childhood. And then I slowly realized that it was that you love life, natural life and what you can do with your loved ones in nature. I loved it. Oh my god, I loved it. I loved your imagery and your marriage of sensory and tangible descriptions. So that being said, my thoughts, my suggestions are few, very far between, but again, like last time, this is more of a personal exercise, my, my suggestion here. Um, I would like you to try and remove the and make the declarations more definitive. Um, my first love is sun shining instead of my first love is the sun shining. Um, so yes, that's just more of a personal exercise um, for, for you as a writer. Um, <laughs> I loved it a lot. Oh my gosh. Um, are these short form or can I submit like a thousand page? But you can, you can submit a thousand page epic. I can't tell you how long it will take me to read, review, and then recite it. But, you know, you can do it. Um, obviously he doesn't give himself, right lady? He does not give himself enough credit. Uh, if that was novice, then I haven't learned to crawl yet and he's running. Right, Tracer? Right? I'm... I was talking to Joe, and I don't know if Joe's here or not, uh, because he has that work, and where the smurf is he, um, Thor is at work as well. Um, yeah, I'm not mad about it. Uh, I'm... I mean, I'm sad that they don't get to be here to experience this live with us, but... Holy crap. He and I are, I feel like, on the same level when it comes to writing. He is, if, if he's not experienced, he's a complete natural. And like I said, I was talking to Joe about it, and Joe wants to um, uh, sharpen his writing skills. I've been writing for 19 years. 19 years, guys. I was first published when I was 11. And, um... Yeah, <laughs> this this is amazing. This is incredible. Holy crap! If that's novice, I'm gonna go back to doing cave paintings. Wolf, you are incredible too. Don't get that twisted. I don't know how much experience you have with writing, but like I said, you blow my mind every single submission, every single one. Um, if there's any more feedback, I'm gonna take a couple. Uh, well, another minute, because we are going a little long, because um, some of these submissions are a bit long. Um, but yes. Holy crap, guys. <laughs> like, pulling cable. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm just- I am- I am just basking in this incredible talent that you guys have shared with me. Um, holy crap, guys. Holy crap. I'm just blown away. Okay. Um, all right, we'll go on to the next submission. We've got two more. Uh, where does one submit, Quaz? Uh, Mass, if you could drop the Discord link. Uh, you can submit to me via my Discord server. Um, it's... Thank you, Tracer. 
Uh, it's parchment mites and there is a special channel called BTP submissions. You go in there, you can submit your writing, you could submit a drawing, you could submit um, a composition, uh, a music file. You could submit any form of artistic expression that has inspired you uh, with the, the writing prompts that I submit each um, every other week. So I, I'm opening it up to every artistic way of expression. I don't care if like you put an outfit together, sewed an outfit. I don't care what you did that was inspired by my prompt. I want to see it. And if you want to submit a, anonymously, you can obviously do that via DM. So please feel free to DM me uh, in Discord. Um, if you want to submit anonymously. A lot of people, or a couple of people, have submitted their works via DM um, and not anonymously. You can do that as well, that's fine. Uh, if you don't want other people to like get a hold of it and like keep a hold of it. Um, this will be uh, obviously broadcast live and then it will be saved via YouTube. So you can go back and see it anytime you want. And uh, yeah. That's where we're at, guys. Um, all right. We're going to get into the next submission. Um, the next submission is my trigger warning. This is not my work. I promise I'm not going to cry during my work this time. I really hope I don't. I'm not going to break down, at least. Um, but there is a trigger warning. Uh, this submission is by my very own Mass Moon. And... Um, he wanted to put it in there. He put it in there himself at the end. Um, he does not want sympathy. He does not want anything like that. This is just his expression of his first love. And um, it's a little bit violent, a little bit brutal. Um, Wolf's submission was violent, and this is a little bit... Um, This is a little bit harsher for me, specifically for me anyway. Um, so I did want to put a trigger warning. Um, if you don't want to hear it, that's fine. If you need to take a break, that's fine. But I'm going to get through it. And uh, yeah, we're good. So my hydration in. Mission by Massman. He was an American Akita named Jazz. He came to me several years after the trauma and abuse I faced as a kid due to my biological mother's negligence and choice in men. After the final day my mom had custody of me, I was left with a fractured skull a broken arm, a dislocated shoulder, and a slew of other physical injuries. All of them were insignificant to the mental and emotional damages, though. I had an impossible time opening up and trusting people and caring about people. I wanted to cease to exist. I attempted to commit suicide. I was angry and bitter all the time. I was 13. I got jazz. For those unfamiliar with American Akitas, they were a breed of Japanese hunting hounds, extremely loyal but full of love and happiness. Jazz was absolutely the embodiment of that. Whenever I was in a bad spot, he would be there, always giving love and never asking for anything in return. He didn't need to understand what I went through, and I didn't have to talk about it and explain it. Something I was incapable and unwilling to do. He was just there for me in ways that I had never had before. Always with the derpiest smile on his face. 
I miss him immensely. If I had to say what my first love was, it would be the love I had for Jazz and what he did for me. I was able to accept and move on from my abuse and he was the catalyst for that. Unfortunately, he passed away when he was three. And while it devastated my heart, I had never forgotten him. I still have his collar and necklace that I made for him. From him grew a passion for animals that I actively pursue where I can. I have had other wolf breeds since, and my current companion is a cat I rescued from an abusive home. I volunteer with local wildlife refuges to help rescue and rehome animals in the wild. For Jazz, it took nothing to help mend a broken person. And for me, the least I can do is bring to other animals what he brought to me. As a side note, I am not interested in sympathy or apologies for my past experiences. I am who I am today because of them. And I'm at peace with that. They were traumatic and long-term damage was done, but without them, I wouldn't be who I am now and I wouldn't be where I am in life with the people I love without it. <sighs> Hi, Morgan. Um, I am reading community submissions for Between the Pages and it's, yes, technically a story. Um, that was a submission by Mass Moon for uh, telling us about his first love. So, yeah, I gave the trigger warning. Um, but for those of you that came late, I'm sorry if you walked into that and were not prepared. Um, Mass. I don't even know what to say. Um, this was teeming with emotion, and I definitely felt love. But it was pining pain for me, anyway. Um, there was a need for Jazz's love. You needed it. That's how I felt. I, I needed it. I got a lot of pain from this work. Um, it was very well organized and incredibly written. Uh, where it flowed and filled me with emotions. However, if you were to rework it, uh, I would see what you could do to focus on jazz. Um, how he made you feel and what you are feeling for the animals that you save now. Give me some, some sensory. Give me something tangible to hold on to. Because the the overwhelming feeling that I got there was just this this longing, this need for Jazz's love and affection. And it it hurt, but I <laughs> You guys remember that uh, part in Harry Potter? where uh, I believe it was in three where Ron was reading his tea leaves and he said that he was going to experience immense pain but he was gonna be happy about it. It's one of those like I know it's gonna hurt but I want it kind of thing in, in like the least awkward or perverted way possible. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Uh, first loves. First loves often have a uh, heart-rending end. And we all know that first loves are never really over to absurdly quote Nicholas Sparks. Um, why do you have to hurt me this way? That's all I gotta say. Why you gotta hurt me this way? Ouch. Uh, 
Uh, Nessa reads submissions that viewers submit weekly. Each week the theme changes up. Yep, it's every other week, everybody. Lady, right? Right? Oh my god. Why are you guys all so, 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 so talented? Why? I mean, not why, but damn. Yes, by weekly. Morgan, I'm sorry. Morgan, if you haven't joined our Discord server, uh, can someone throw in Discord for me? Um, if you feel that you want to submit, it does not have to be writing. I'm going to keep saying this, I guess, between each and every submission. Um, it can be artwork, it can be a drawing, it can be a painting, it can be a music clip of something you composed inspired by the prompts that I um, post bi-weekly. Um, the details of it are in the BTP submissions channel. You can go there, read the pinned uh, weaving. Go for it, lady. If you weave, go for it. I want to see what it is. I have a friend, she's into um, crochet. And right now she's crocheting uh, one or two lines in like a blanket or some sort of pattern, something. And the colors correspond with the weather that she's experiencing. And I think that's really cool. I think it's awesome. So I don't, I don't care. Whatever it is that you do for your artistic expression, I want to see it. Please submit it. Again, no pressure. No pressure. This community is nothing but wonderful and loving people that I've seen. And if you're not a wonderful, loving person, we will kick you out. I promise. Um, gosh, I really hope I know like a potter or a sculptor or something because I want to see sculptures. I miss sculptures. I love sculptures. I don't care if you like make masks on Etsy. My art was posting, posted to shots by Tracer. That's right. Let's give sh shout out to Tracer because he makes works of art out of weapons. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. Please join our Discord and go into Shots Fired. I made that channel specifically for him because I one, I want to see all your guns. And two, holy crap, he makes art. Tracer, that's art. Not kidding. That's art. I heard about your work. Tracer's work? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Lady, do you have Discord? Are you on our Discord? You going to make me... I was like... <laughs> oh my gosh. But lady, yeah. If Do you have Discord? If not, um, I will do better sharing stuff on Twitter. Lady, I hope you have Twitter. Because um, I, I only have Discord and Twitter for BTP. And, well, I also have YouTube. So if you have YouTube. I <laughs> look like I'd be fun to rob a pet store with. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say Zermus. Hopefully that's your name. Because uh, if not, I'm bad at etymology. And that's bad because I'm an etymologist and a librarian. So I should be able. But I need all the parrots. For obvious reasons. You can have the parrots. Um, I love all animals, guys. And to this day, I still love parrots. But uh, And I'm going to move the mic. I don't know if you can see this. Hold on. Let me move this. Um, holy crap. Where is it? It's right there. You can see it. But there is a chunk of my flesh missing because my mom's parrot decided she did not like it that I dyed my hair red because she was a scarlet macaw. Or she is a scarlet macaw. And she didn't like the fact that my hair was red and that she's a red bird and she wanted to be top bitch. So she came across the couch and bit the fuck out of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is supposed to be the family friendly stream. Uh, but yes, she took a chunk of my skin and I have a hole in my arm. So there's that. You can have the parrots. I love you. <laughs> I need 40 parrots by next week. So this okay. All right. Shh. Nobody tell uh, the pet stores that we're about to rub. So you're pale, you're glowing like... <laughs> Mass? You're not helpful. Don't take my parrot, please. <laughs> Cannibal parrot. Yes, a bird. Did that to you. No! Yeah, the Pacific Northwest has no sun. Like, right now, there are clouds out there. Lots of clouds. 
My all parrot insurance agency is going to make me billions. I love it, Zermas. I love it. I love it. Ugh. I agree. I'm in You're in Seattle? That's cool. I'm not gonna tell you guys where I am, but I am in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but yeah. So yeah, Zermas, I hope that uh, you enjoy my content. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed Mass's submission. Um, any other comments? You're in Puyallup? Shh. Uh, don't tell anybody how well I said that because I love making fun of people who don't know how to spell Puyallup or say Puyallup. <laughs> oh, go Hawks. Uh, yeah, go Hawks. Tyler Lockett is my man. Number 16 all day. I have a Hans Macaw. Does your skin glitter in the sun? Lady, I am not a frou frou wannabe vampire. I would be a vampire of probably the white court. If you guys get that, please follow me. And please subscribe to my Discord because we need to talk. I need somebody who knows about the white court, the red court, and the black court of vampires. Obvi. Please do this. <laughs> uh, people don't say pee all up. They say... Poo-all-up? Oh, ha! <laughs> Poo-all-up? pee all up. Yeah. Uh. She is not from Twilight. Please stop saying that. Mass, I'm not saying that. Mm -mm, this girl knows about dress. Zermis, you're my new best friend. Please tell me I'm saying your name right. Oh my god. Lestat rules. Okay, I can I can go with that. I do love me some Anne Rice, lady. You are in fact saying my name. Yes! Etymologist for the win! Yes! Oh my god. Zermis, you're about to get VIP. Can someone VIP him for me or do I have to do that later? Zermis, you're getting a VIP. I don't even know if you follow me. Edamame? What about Edamame? What are we saying about Edamame? Been here for like 10 seconds. Zermis, you're my new best friend. Don't tell Lecter, he'll be mad at me. I still love you, Lecter. Mwah. <laughs> Let me stop because I liked your nose. You like my nose? Oh my gosh. So guys, I am super self-conscious about my nose now. Um, and I'm all just... Uh, oh, oh, I get it, Tracer, I get it. Um, I'm super self-conscious about my nose because um, my, da my daughter's father told me uh, that he likes how my daughter's nose, or our daughter's nose, um, I have not snorted at all. Racer, you would like my card game I made. I use a lot of interesting words. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, but he likes our daughter's nose because it it turns up, and I I never understood why he said that. And then one day, very recently, I was looking at her, and her her little nose turns up. But if you've ever seen my daughter, guys, and if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen my daughter. Uh, she looks exactly like me. And so I looked at her little nose and how it turns up and how adorable it is. And then I looked in the mirror and I looked at my nose. And my nose goes up. And I'm sitting there like, oh my god, I look like a who? So now I'm really self-conscious about my nose. <laughs> uh. My noise is hot? I like that, because my noise is hot. I don't want to brag, but I once stood on a coconut. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not snorting, guys. I'm sorry, Morgan. You have to be a mod in order to do snort because it has to be official. And I haven't started the snort counter this uh, today. So I'll do that later because we're going to play Among Us tonight, guys. It's going to be uh, 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern. So 8 Central, 7 Mountain. If you're in other time zones, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know them. Um, but we do have one submission left. Uh, Mass, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your first love with us. That was beautiful and wonderful. Please, why would you slap me, Tracer? That's rude. Over here reading. Busy. Busy guys. Anyway, um, so the last submission is my submission. Um, mostly 
because man people like your appearance. Do they? Morgan, I don't I don't really know. I just kind of exist and people want to see my face. I don't know why. Uh but the last submission is my submission and it's only because I actually wait to the very last minute. Um I write my stuff the day of the deadline. <laughs> Please don't be like me. Um yeah, that's what we do. You can only imagine why. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut. Up. You can only imagine why I um I wait to the last minute. It's because I am I don't know. I'm lazy. I'm an author, I'm an artist, and I just I just do shit, okay? Just just do. Okay? Do. Anyway. Um so the last submission is my submission. Um it's not too long. So I hope that I don't bore you to death. Alright, um, everyone ready? Let me get my hydration in. Yeah, Zermus, we're gonna we're gonna do the parrot thing, but we gotta wait till after uh stream, okay? Catch you later. Trigger. It's not a trigger warning, Claus. It's not a trigger warning, I promise. It's not as bad as last week when I was crying. Alright, so. <sighs> The poems process great. <laughs> Stop about the parrot thing. Yes, Tracer, before I start, what what is it? What would you like to tell me? And I would like you to hurry up, please, because I do have to spawn you. Damn it. Took away the command. What? Zeramus, thank you for the new follow. Appreciate you. What command? What command? You guys are killing me. All right, I don't know what you guys are doing or saying, so I'm gonna go on with my submission. Let's get going. Uh, so this is my submission about my first love. How old were you when you found your first love? How old were you when you first knew what it felt like to be touched by that love? I've loved a lot in my life. I remember being six and falling in love with everything. I fell in love with the beautiful costumes and sets of the theater. I fell in love with intense and dedicated role playing. I was infatuated with a quiet and gentle boy named Patrick. And if I couldn't have any of those things, I had to be surrounded by books. I remember when I couldn't even read yet, I would page through books. The smell, feel of old and new pages, begging adults to read to me, and staring at pages of text with no pictures, wishing that I could see the world inside of them. And I thought all of that was love. All through my life, I found refuge, books, I found safety and comfort. I found a home. And I thought that was love. How old was I when I found my first love? I was eight. I was visiting family in Michigan when I saw the 1998 Winter Olympics figure skating. I was eight. I became enraptured with the beauty and grace, the lights, the costumes. It was theater. But you could fly around their stage. I was eight. I carried this unrequited passion with me for 14 years before I had the opportunity to touch her. My 22nd birthday, my best friend surprised me by bringing me to an ice rink he had found. I laced up those dingy rental skates. And I transformed into Cinderella wearing her glass slippers. 
touching the ice for the first time. I was born to skate. And walking on solid ground was unnatural. I soared around the rink, and nothing else existed anymore. I was in my own world of biting air and weightless grace. Skating magic. Skating is love. My love waited for me. She waited while I was prevented from being with her. She waited while I was too afraid to be with her. But when we were together, the past didn't matter. The pains we endured didn't matter. The uncertain future didn't matter. And now, during this time that we can't be together, she waits for me as I long for her touch. So yeah, guys, uh, in case you didn't know, you should know if you've been in here before, uh, I am a an amateur figure skater. Um, I cannot fully do figure skating or ballet anymore because of uh, the injury I sustained in my military career. Um, my shoulder prevents me from doing a whole lot, but what I can do and when I can do it. Figure skating is my, my love. <laughs> I can't even equate another feeling in this world to how I feel when I'm on the ice. And all I can tell you is love, passion. So, I love figure skating. Obviously, I love books. Um, and I can sit for hours and hours and hours reading books. But I, I am dying for someone to be able to um, broadcast me uh, skating. What about hockey? I've never played um, ice hockey. I've played field hockey, but never ice hockey. I, I am, I am a figure skater. <laughs> um, so yeah, is there any feedback anybody's got? Um, some people had, uh, curling. You love it. Thank you, lady. Um, some people had, uh, first access, advanced access to, uh, my writing for their own reviews. So I'm hoping that they have um, some comments of their own to, to throw in. Um, I love getting feedback. I love um, being able to grow as a, a writer. I've, I've written a lot, obviously. I've been published uh, a few times now. And um, I still don't think that uh, I still don't think that my stuff is the best or great, but Loads of people assume love about boyfriend and girlfriend, but it's also about falling in love with things that make you happy. Exactly, Morgan, exactly. Um, that was that was something that I really wanted to emphasize in, in the writing prompt, is that uh, I want to know about your first love, and that doesn't have to be a person. People always assume it's, it's about a person. And I could tell you about the first uh, person I fell in love with. Fell in love with? Because like I said, I, I have loved a lot in my life. I have so much love to give. And that's fine, I could tell you about that. But I don't think anything has ever compared to how I feel about skating. Yay! Bella has Thor's comments. Sweet. If I were to have any, is that you speak of several first loves. Over the course 
of your early year, which is wonderful, but after seeing and reading the way you describe your time on the ice, I want to hear more about her. I know, right? Uh, I, I am dying. I really hope that there is someone, somewhere, somehow, that you guys can watch me skate. I want, I want to stream a, a skating routine. Um, one, COVID's obviously closed uh, the rinks, at least around here, and um, it's it's been a long time since I've been on the ice. So one, I'm not going to be very good yet, or anymore, and uh, two, it's pretty much impossible. And three, I don't have anyone who could um, man a camera, because you can uh, broadcast from mobile now. We can do that. Also, side note, this is a must and we shall find a way to go skating the next time we're all together. Yes! Bella, there is a wonderful, wonderful skating rink. It's gonna be a drive, but it's the one that I used to go to when I lived down there. And, um, so side, side note, um, I took kind of a, a date there one time. And, um, yeah, she was... Uh, it was wonderful that she she wasn't very good at skating and that was fine it was, it was perfectly fine but she wanted to to see me in my element she wanted to experience that with me and I thought that was really special yes I'll keep squidlets oh. anyway so yeah um any other comments guys comments Questions, concerns, before I reveal the newest uh, writing prompt. Nanashi, what's up, buddy? I gotta grab my notepad, hold on. I wrote it down. I wrote it down because this is actually, um, this is actually a suggestion. Skating is something good to fall in love with. It's just relaxing and joyful, right? Hola. Um, yeah. Any other comments about my writing? Anyone else's writing? Uh, I am open to them and I will obviously pass them along if that person's not particularly here at this moment. Um, but yeah. Guys, join the Discord. Uh, join our Parchment Mites. Subscribe to the YouTube if you want to uh, review these again. Um, but I love this community that we're growing. Um, I love how expressive, how creative, and how incredible each and every one of you are, uh, just so you know. Uh, and I'm glad that you guys are willing to share this with me. Please, please join the Parchment Mites. I'll do it for my wonderful, <laughs> wonderful mods. Join, join Discord, explore uh, the, the server, go into my YouTube, let me get that for you. Explore the server um, and look into the BTP submissions so you can, uh, thank you Tracer, so you can see it for yourself. Um, like I said, this isn't just for writing anymore, this is for everything. If you draw, digital, hand-drawn, I don't care. If you paint, if you sculpt, if you compose, if you write songs, I don't care what your medium is. If you are inspired by these prompts to create something, please share it with us. And again, you can do it anonymously. You can privately DM me and I will exhibit it with as much discretion as possible. And I want to share this community, guys. I want us to grow. Honestly, I would like Twitch to create a different category for us because right now I'm stuck in just chatting. And I, I have no place to put books. I have no place to put literature. I have nothing like that. So thank you, Morgan, for subscribing to our YouTube. Appreciate you so much. Um. Yeah, I want this community to grow, and I want to exhibit each and every one of you. I want us to get better, and I want us to share uh, everything 
that we have here with other loving and beautiful souls like yourselves. So, um, if there aren't any more comments about the writings, I can, uh, I can submit our next writing prompt. This writing prompt will be aired, uh, the submissions for this writing prompt will be aired on February the 11th. Uh, all submissions are due by February the 7th. Uh, I need some time to review, obviously, and um, all submissions are due by the end of the day on February 7th. So please do that. Um, so, our next writing prompt for the 11th actually comes from Bella, uh, by way of Thor to me. Uh, apparently, Bella's, uh, work submits kind of, or they, they posit this, this question, uh, for an exercise, as I understand it, in her work. And Thor submitted it to me as a suggested writing prompt, and I actually fell in love with it, and I'm super excited about it. Um, like I said, any medium that you want to work with, uh, if you're inspired by this prompt, please do it. But the prompt is, if you were to separate your life as it is, what would the titles be? So if you were to segment your life, um, up to your current experience, what would each chapter be? From the beginning to now, obviously you don't have to write an ending, um, but what would the titles of your chapters be? You could totally Jim Butcher it and just put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever. I don't care. But I want to know how you would separate it and what the titles would be. This is probably gonna be a shorter uh, episode of Paper Cuts on the 11th because titles obviously don't take up uh, paragraphs, but it's gonna be a challenge and I love I love how wonderful you guys have like come to me. Like you, you tell me, each time we've done this, you've told me that this was a challenge for me in one way or another and I love it. I love it because you all come through for me. Each and every one of you that have submitted, you have all come through and it's been amazing. I love it. Absolutely love it to death. So please, please don't do a thousand pages. <laughs> Never give you <gasps> Oh my god, God. Boss. Ah. You're you're just gonna give me a heart attack, and I love it. So, uh, one more time, guys. If you are interested in submitting, please go to our Discord. There is a special channel called BTP Submissions. Please join our community. Please feel free. Feel welcome in. Everyone is amazing. Everyone is actually amazing. And I can't wait to see what we create together. <laughs>